The Los Angeles Lakers are once again getting hot at the right time. While I always saw some flaws with this roster, it always confused me how basically LeBron, AD, and Shooters wasn't at least an elite offense. The Lakers have finally figured it out and are 8-2 in their last 10, and will be heading into the postseason playing their best basketball. The agelessness of LeBron James and some newfound consistency with Anthony Davis makes the Lakers a team no top seed wants in the first round. Today I will be going over this recent Lakers stretch, the pieces of the puzzle, and what I expect from the squad come playoff or play in time. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that naughty bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. This Lakers run has had many different wins in many ways. With LeBron, without LeBron, against good teams and against bad teams. Basically, no matter what, the Lakers have been getting the job done as of late. While this run is in part due to facing the Wizards, Raptors, Grizzlies, and Hawks, you also have quality wins in the Bucks without LeBron and the Pacers. While trust me, we're going to talk about Bron, Anthony Davis has been on a dominant run as of late. In his past 10 games, he is averaging 25-15-3 on 55-32-85 for a true shooting percentage of 62.8. We all know how talented Anthony Davis is and how dominant he can be, and he's getting back to himself before the Lakers have some must-win playing games. 80's offense is cream of the crop, but his defense allows him to, in Austin Reeves' words, never have a bad game. The impact of his presence on the court alone is immense, and almost none of it shows up in the box score. Don't get me wrong, he has big block games, but people not wanting to go up in fear of getting blocked or contested is where AD's defensive impact is truly felt. The lack of big men on this Lakers roster is what makes AD's impact so glaring. While the Lakers do have some bigger wings, outside of Jackson Hayes and Vando who's been hurt, their interior presence outside of AD really isn't much. This team is lucky to be an average defense, and if you replace AD with even an average defensive center, I feel like this could be a bottom 5-7 to seven defense. Elite spacing comes at a cost, and when you have an all-time rim protector like AD, you take that chance. This might be a bit hard to follow, but I don't think this team is a play-in team because of how the roster is constructed, but because of the talent level. I understand how this could be confusing and you could be saying what's the difference, but let me explain. The skill set's present in overall concept of LeBron, AD, and shooters and shot creators I love, but I think a little more talent would help. The West is also just absolutely unreal, so there's that as well. While I think a little more talent would be helpful, how could it not be? The other guys in LA have been playing great. D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and Rui Hachimura are all showing that they were worth keeping around despite some team struggles. We've heard a decent amount about Reeves and D'Lo, but as of late, Rui Hachimura has been playing out of his mind. In this 10-game stretch, Rui Hachimura is averaging 17-6-2 on 62-46-82 for a true shooting percentage of 71.5. He undoubtedly had his best game of this run in Memphis, putting up 32-10 on 11 for 14 from the field and 7 for 8 from deep. Rui proved to be an outstanding pickup for Rob Palinka, and we are seeing that on full display once again. LeBron and AD will get their numbers, but getting your role players going headed into the postseason will not only help the role players, but will also open up the game a lot more for LeBron and AD. Rui Reeves and D'Lo on the court alongside LeBron and AD spreads out the court and makes defense extremely complicated. Relative to how they're performing this season, both D'Lo and AR are both not performing great during this stretch, but this somehow makes me fear the Lakers even more. If they can go 8-2 with two core pieces not playing their best, what can they do when it's all clicking? Now all this isn't just a given, but I'd have to assume Austin Reeves will shoot better than his 23.7% from deep over his last 10 games in his next 10. While this stretch hasn't been the best for him, I want to talk about what Austin Reeves brings to the table. To me, he is the perfect secondary ball handler and shot creator next to LeBron. He's 6'5", can handle and run the offensive needed, and can shoot the lights out. He allows for another ball handler on the court while still having size. The four-year $53 million deal he signed is an absolute bargain, and should the Lakers move forward with LeBron and AD past this season, that contract will be huge in allowing the Lakers cap flexibility. A huge and underrated part of this Lakers team is D'Angelo Russell. Everyone remembers his run with Brooklyn, but he has quietly been putting together one of his best seasons. D'Lo is averaging 18-3-6 on 46-42-82 for a true shooting percentage of 59.1. D'Lo, like LeBron, has found the sweet spot between volume and efficiency for his three-point shooting. This season, D'Lo is shooting over 42% from deep on over 7 attempts a game. This level of spacing will be huge when the court shrinks come playoff time. Finally, we get to talk about the center of it all. LeBron James. The timelessness of LeBron was already insane, but he has somehow kicked it into another gear as of late. 
Over the nine games he's played in this 10 game stretch, 39 year old LeBron James is averaging 26, eight and nine on 60, 55, 79 for a true shooting percentage of 69.7. I'm going to be releasing a video tomorrow on LeBron shooting alone, so look out for that. But what he's doing night in and night out is nothing short of unbelievable. He's still able to flip that switch in year 21, and we're getting to Tom Brady territory now where we can't look at logic at all. His 25, seven and seven on decent efficiency was always insane, but seeing that he still has another gear he can get into is scary. I try to watch LeBron every chance I get, and nearly without fail, I am flat out amazed every time I turn on the game. His ability to completely control a game and still do whatever he feels like at will is just so insane to watch, and headed towards the playoffs, he's playing like a true superstar again. It's partially a shame he has to do as much as he does, but I am a little grateful that the Lakers weren't able to get in a third star so we can still see LeBron show out night in and night out. As I said, I will be releasing an entire video on him becoming a near 42% three-point shooter, but I want to discuss that a bit here. Everyone thought when his athleticism slowed, he'd be done, and that he wouldn't be great deep into his 30s, and boy were they wrong. Can I blame people for assuming someone would slow down at age 37 to 39? No, but that just makes it even more unbelievable. Him seemingly just deciding to become an elite shooter is unreal, and it makes me think he could be valuable into his mid-40s. I want to end off by saying this. If you truly enjoy basketball, watch LeBron every chance you get. We don't know how much longer he'll be around and he's still playing at an elite level. The NBA as many know it will never be the same when he leaves and many don't even know what an NBA without LeBron at the center looks like. The best way I can put it is I was born halfway through LeBron's rookie year and I am now here making video essays about his current play as a 20 year old. Guys have played for a long time but being this elite this long is almost never seen. We have a lot of great future stars in this league but the past is still holding on, and this blend of past, present, and future is what to me makes the NBA so great right now. Now for my expectations for this Lakers squad. I obviously think they get out of the play-in, but it's going to be hard to pick them over either of the top two seeds, no matter who they end up being. I will say this though, the Lakers are probably the team a top seed wants to see the least out of the play-in teams. An OKC matchup could get scary with the lack of size and experience, but other than that, I don't know honestly. This is still a play-in team we're talking about, and while making a series with Minnesota OKC or the Clippers competitive wouldn't surprise me, a swift loss wouldn't either. The Lakers, as of this year and last year, really like surprises apparently. As I said, I think this team can probably compete with anyone but Denver, but they will still be at best a 7 seed facing a 2 seed. It's a shame they couldn't get it going earlier, but you'd rather this than the reverse. I'm really curious to see if the Lakers can make a run again, and only time will tell. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that naughty bell. It would help me out a ton. Comment down below your thoughts on the Lakers, how far you think they can go, what you know, what you think about what LeBron's doing right now, because it is just ridiculous. But yeah, that's going to officially wrap this one up. Once again, like it up, sub the channel. really helps me out a ton, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.